Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today for our Gen Z webinar. We're really excited to talk to you about the always hot topic and growing power of Gen Z. We have so many great partners here today on the call, some of which we've worked with for years, or maybe just getting started with LDK or even considering becoming a partner. Um, I'm Paige Gavoni. I am the principal of partnership media here at LTK for our brand partners. I'm excited to be joined today by Angelica Song and Maggie Williams, who you'll hear from later on for a creator panel. We're hoping everyone finds this session educational and insightful. And as a housekeeping note, we will be sending this presentation as a follow-up. So rest assured, um, feel free to take notes along, but you will have this slide deck. So kicking us off today with a brief overview of LTK for those of you who are newer or unfamiliar with the platform. LTK is a creator commerce platform powering technology for creators, brands, and consumers. Our business has dedicated teams across each of these segments to really help build our marketplace. We help brands harness the power of creator commerce through technology, relationships, and marketing campaigns. I think this slide here does a really great job of visually demonstrating the opportunity for brands in the creator space with LTK. LTK is here in the center connecting that content that creators post and commerce together for consumers to shop, what we like to refer to as creator guided shopping. So on the left-hand side here, side one of our marketplace, we have the creator who we all love. Um, we see the creators and the channels that they post on. They think of LTK essential to their business and really at the core of their business. We give creators the tools to monetize their content across all of these platforms. So while platforms ebb and flow and emerge and change over time and consumers change what they want or how they interact on these platforms, LTK serves as that center of the ecosystem, allowing creators to link back to and give their uh, shoppers product recommendations. These creators every day have choices. Which products should I link to? Which brands should I post about? Um, this really, of course, leads us to the second side of our marketplace here on the right hand side, brands and retailers. So LTK is unique in that we have data from all of these creators, from all of these platforms and all of the products that they're posting about. So what we do best as a business is we help you create a strategy to help you harness your full potential of creator marketing, likely with a strong focus on creator campaigns. So LTK really helps bring all of this to life for you as a brand tracking the behavior of these creators back to those products that they choose to post about and link to um, providing a cohesive shopping experience for your brand. And then of course, the third and final part of our marketplace is the consumer. With the LTK app, we have over 20 million shoppers. We make it possible for these consumers to shop their creators. Again, that creator guided shopping experience. The app is highly sticky for shoppers. And creators really think of LTK as their recommendation hub. So consumers can access link to any and all platforms, um, the product mentions that they posted across all these uh, social platforms. So fast forward 12 years later, we have so much data between all these creators and brands and shoppers. We can really pull out insights to provide value to you as a brand to help your program scale and stand the test of time in creator marketing. Here we have a sneak peek of what's to come today and really why we're here. So Gen Z follows creators for their authenticity and they trust their style too. Creator content is the most trusted form of social media when we compare it to social media ads and celebrities. Gen Z is shopping from creators across online and in-store product recommendations. We'll dive deeper into each of these during today's session, but really what we see here is all of these point to the fact that Creators are important for Gen Z. From a brand standpoint, if you're not investing in creator marketing, you are not reaching Gen Z in the most effective and efficient way possible. And therefore, you're missing out on the purchasing power of this generation. As the title of this webinar stated with Gen Z Shopper Study, we'll be sharing data today from our two recent shopper studies, which were both completed last month. The data is based off of two studies one being our national shopper survey and one being an in-store shopper survey. Each study represented the entire population with over a thousand participants on each of the studies. Both of these studies were filtered to identify Gen Z responses and key characteristics of Gen Z. 
So as a brand, this information is extremely valuable as you start to think through how Gen Z should become a staple in your overall marketing plan. And then of course, knowing in this economy, budgets need to be spent more wisely than ever. So access to valuable data, like in this study, will help you make informed decisions. Um, so to set the stage, we want to talk about who is Gen Z. Often described as one lump segment as Gen Z, our study shows how Gen Z is represented by multiple lifestyles. So based on our survey results, here are some of the ways that they describe themselves. As you can see, beauty enthusiast, travel, pet owner, foodie, student. Um, it's really important to look at Gen Z as a segment of your overall marketing strategy, but you should also look at Gen Z as part of the larger lifestyle segments that you're looking to reach and market to and not just as this one generational target. So like we just said, Gen Z is made up of multiple different lifestyles, but their online behavior is consistent across the generation. To no surprise and not necessarily specific to Gen Z, 100% of Gen Z shops online and the majority originate their shopping from social media. Over three fourths of Gen Z watch creator videos and purchase from creators and unshockingly 99% use social media. An interesting call out here, however, is that in the same survey, the general population social media consumption increased four percentage points compared to our last survey, looking at general population social media usage at 93%. So social media trends continue to even rise in 2023. Another interesting call out here is that we see Instagram as the number one favorite platform by Gen Z, where in our last survey, TikTok was actually listed as number one. So this is something LTK will continue to keep an eye on and report out on the future. But this really is important for brands on the call. It shows the continued ebbs and flows of these platforms like we mentioned. Um, it's the, you know, important to talk about platform diversification and having presence on each of these platforms, but really what holds consistent here is that LTK can be a landing place and a core part of your strategy as these platforms ebb and flow and it has this evergreen destination for creators to link to and host their personal shops, driving all of their recommendations. So we see that Gen Z follows mostly micro and macro creators, which is great news for brands. Creators with smaller audience counts have much higher engagement and conversions per follower than celebrities and mega creators. LTK curates the most creators of all sizes and shares their posts on LTK's five-star shopping app with our 20 million shoppers, resulting in unmatched reach and engagement. But why do Gen Z follow these creators? The theme here is definitely authenticity. They're following because they think the creator's funny. They think the creator's honest. As well, they call out that creators have a similar lifestyle to them. So this comes back to a couple slides back when we talked about the different lifestyles that Gen Z has. They're following these creators because they find like similarities in their hobbies, in their interests, their life stages. Um, so all this being said, when it comes to creators and casting creators on brand campaigns, we use our 12 years of proprietary data to cast on these campaign collaborations. We look for creators who are already linking to your brand or maybe linking to a competitor's product. We'll look at making sure we have a mix of macro and micro creators to really achieve the best results for your brand. As we previewed at the beginning of our call, Gen Z is the most trusted form of social media when compared to social media ads and celebrity posts. Creators are actually 3.5 times more influential to Gen Z than social media ads. So those audiences are naturally turning to creators to tell them what they should buy due to the authenticity and the trust that they've built with them with their followers. So now that we've kind of established who is Gen Z, we've established the trust between creators and this generation, let's dive into their shopping habits. 75% of Gen Z makes purchases online from creator recommendations. This is 21% higher than the general population who's also shopping creator at a high rate um, of more than half at 63%. Gen Z is shopping from creators across multiple categories. LTK creators really are posting every single part of their life, whether it's their morning get ready routine, their breakfast, their outfit for date night, so on and so forth. We're seeing the multi categories being shopped from. So beauty and fashion really top the chart here, but we also see food, electronics, cleaning products, 
gaming products are also popular to shop from creators with the Gen Z audience. Creator marketing is not just beauty and fashion centric anymore like it in its origination. It really spans across every single vertical. So our data really enforces that all brands can see benefit from creator marketing, no matter the category that they sit in. Next, we wanna talk about the efficiency beyond just the online usage. In our study, we found that consumers were not only utilizing creator recommendations to shop online, but also when they're making purchases in store, really proving that creator marketing is the most memorable form of marketing due to its authentic nature and resonating with shoppers. Here you can see that 63% of the general population, 67% of millennials, and 77% of Gen Z are shopping in store from creator recommendations. We've also done testing with brand partners to look at the lift and in store sales when shopping from creator recommendations, really showing that creator drives performance beyond the last click model. Overarchingly, we see that CPG products are the top category that Gen Z is shopping in store from creator recs, which differs from online shopping behavior where we saw beauty and fashion really top the charts. CPG is much more all encompassing and looking at the categories of food, beverage, personal care cleaning supplies, beauty, you name it. Furthermore, we're seeing that Gen Z consumers are switching their go-to brands because of products that creators posted about. 42% have switched their go-to brand showing the powers creators have in swaying their audiences with new products and brand discovery. Here we're wanting to call out some action that brands can take now. Gen Z is ready to shop for summer like all of us are with this change of seasons. We see beauty and fashion items that they're looking to purchase here being shoes, makeup, jewelry, skincare, shorts, and swimwear. Like we just mentioned, these purchases will take place across online and store based off that prior data. So we've talked about the what are they purchasing, but now let's talk about the where. Where is Gen Z looking to purchase from? Gen Z's favorite places to shop are trendy and budget friendly. 63% of Gen Z shop these. A good portion is also considering environmental factors when shopping. 43% say they shop from sustainable brands and 33% say they shop from resale companies like Poshmark. This is compared to 32% of millennials and 23% of millennials for the resale companies. Previously, we shared why Gen Z follows creators with authenticity being the theme. This is no different from when creators, uh, when Gen Z shops from creators. They trust their style, the opinions they share about product quality and fit. And they also state that these creators help them discover new brands and new products. This is the top reason we see the general population shopping from creators for. When Gen Z shops from creators, they are more likely to be satisfied with their purchase, which is huge for everyone on this call. So really wanting to make sure to call attention here. Of Gen Z who watch creator videos, 47% so that they are less likely to return something after seeing a creator describe it in a video. With creator videos, as everyone can imagine, you're going to get a better understanding of how something fits or maybe suggestions on how to style it or even understand benefits and features of a product that you may not be able to gather from a static post, whether a dress has pockets, which all of us women love, or the texture of a fabric or the thickness of a lip gloss. This is huge for brands, um, as many brands you know, may face challenges with forecasting, inventory positioning, return rates, and more. It's a really important data point to bring back to your organizations when thinking about investing in creator marketing. As we talk about investing in creator marketing, you know, the elephant in the room is obviously the state of the economy. So your brand's likely talking about how to optimize your budget, maximize your efficiencies, how to pivot and make the most of your spend. On a positive note, what LTK is seeing in our data is that Gen Z is the least impacted by inflation, and they currently have the most positive financial outlook. In our study, we found that different sectors of the population are disproportionately affected by inflation. So despite the current economic environment, Gen Z purchasing power is actually increasing during this time. This is largely due to the fact that their overall purchasing power is growing at a faster rate than other generations. Millennials are also less impacted by inflationary pressures for similar reasons. So these generations being millennial and Gen Z are most engaged with creator commerce, really showing and providing that there's more opportunity to drive better margins through this channel for your brand. 
The next topic that we want to switch into is Gen Z and creator marketing. Here is a quick snapshot of Gen Z creator content in action, even though we weave um, content throughout the presentation and its beautiful nature and how effective it is for brands. Um, we really wanted to show just a variety here that you can see how different categories come to life across CPG, fashion, beauty, et cetera. Gen Z has favorable opinions of creator marketing showing worthwhile investment for brands on our call today. Gen Z has the most favorable opinions for creator content, 82% having favorable opinions, while also having favorable opinions of creator gifting at 65% and commissionable links at 75% as well. These favorable opinions also hold true across millennials and the general population, again, showing worthwhile investment for all of our brands. Alongside our survey data, we wanted to take a glance at our on-property LTK network data, really putting some um, numbers behind all of the survey data. So Gen Z is the fastest growing influencer generation on LTK with new creators being onboarded every single day by our amazing teams. Here we have a sampling of the top products from our Gen Z creators in Q1. The sampling spans across many viral items, including the Lululemon belt bag, which we all see on the hot girl walks, and then features in so many makeup routines, including the rare beauty blush, which I finally just pulled the trigger on yesterday, um, and other favorites such as the Dior lip boy oil, Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter, Kosas concealer, you name it. Gen Z certainly knows how to share and get traffic to a trending product. No more gatekeeping from our Gen Z creators in 2023. Here we have a look at the top brands that Gen Z linked to on property from LTK, as well as brands that over index for Gen Z versus other generations. You can see here that not only are Gen Z creators linking to beauty and fashion, which has been obvious trends in our data today, but as well as Walmart, Target, and Amazon, which span across multiple verticals. As Gen Z grows up, we will continue to see these lists expand as they enter different life stages and purchasing household items, family, baby products, etc. For brands on the call that are maybe not seeing traction and linking from Gen Z, LTK can be a great partner to help you really strategize and increase your uh, creator marketing approach. Video content is a huge part of reaching Gen Z effectively. We see such big jumps in video content on our platform year after year. Right now, we're seeing three times higher GMV year over year than static content on our platform for video. We also see all of the brands that are partnering with us increase their video content. We've had an increase of five times short term, short form video content um, campaigns year over year. We're also seeing increased posting from all of our creators about video content. And based off of our survey data, we showed that. Gen Z is looking to shop from creator video. So really all sides of our platform are raising their hand and showing, yes, we want to shop video from creators to drive us to new products. So switching gears, how can LTK help drive these effective campaigns and creator strategy for reaching Gen Z? We touched on our LTK app a few times throughout the presentation so far today. Here we wanted to highlight showing the app in action for those of you who aren't familiar. Here we have a creator's LTK post linking to a product out to a retailer site. We have over 6,000 brands in our ecosystem and hundreds of thousands of LTK curated creators posting every day for our 20 million shoppers. This drives 3.6 billion in annual trackable sales. Yes, billion. Um, so next we'll talk about best practices for creator commerce to go along with this shopping app. Here are some of the best practices for brands and retailers alike. With us, you should be engaging with LTK Insights, which is our benchmark reporting. Um, maintaining an always-on presence, not one-off campaigns or seasonal campaigns. That always-on presence will help you capture share a voice. Establish a competitive commission rate, incentivizing creators to organically link to your brand. Partnering with LTK on your overall creator strategy, of course, striving for short-form video content, as we just talked about with video performance being on the rise, especially with Gen Z. Surround your campaigns with LTK ads and media boosting, which we'll talk about here in a second and participate in key network events like LTKCon, which is coming up in September. 
Diversify product selection to capture wider breadth and demand of shoppers. LTK is really here to partner with you to help you um, implement all these best practices to reach Gen Z effectively and round out your creator marketing strategy. As we just touched on, LTK offers additional opportunities to round out your campaign collaborations, expanding your reach and performance with LTK. LTK Boost is LTK's media boosting offering. This allows for scaling campaign content to targeted audiences with paid media. LTK boosts the campaign content in its truest form, as is with no modifications, really showing that organic performance as a post from the creator's handle, as is driving that same organic consumer experience, but to incremental shoppers outside of creator's followers. LTK offers customized ad packages as a part of our LTK ads program. This allows us to use specific moments in the year to reach our network of consumers and creators. Some of the packages may include things like free grams, newsletter placements, and more. We also have an offering called LTK Insights, which offers customized benchmarking reports, which will help your brand inform spend decisions and growth strategy. No matter what your brand's goals are, LTK has a plethora of resources and tools to really work with you to provide a robust strategy and recommendations to maximize results and performance of your authentic creator content. So to wrap up the survey and data portion of our time today, creators are the most trusted, 3.5 times more influential to Gen Z consumers than social media ads. Gen Z shops from creators because of their authentic opinions on style. Gen Z is less likely to return something after seeing a creator describe it in a video. Gen Z is also feeling a less impact from inflation, and Gen Z has favorable opinions on creator marketing across content, commissionable links, and creator gifting. So enough from me and the data, now on to the good stuff with our creator panel. Before we hop into that, we just wanna say thank you and take time to also plug our next webinar, which will be on May 17th, three to four Eastern. This webinar will be titled Creator Marketing for Recessionary Times. And now I would like to welcome Angelica Song and Maggie Williams. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you. So we walked all the brands, you know, on the webinar through a ton of industry data and really how to unlock Gen Z spending power. But we always say creator marketing is not just a science, but an art. There are people behind this marketing being you guys as the creator. So we want to hear directly from you. So before we hop in, want to have you guys tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started as a creator and what kind of content do you focus on? Maggie, I'd love to start with you. Okay, yeah. Um, so I basically started just by creating like silly TikTok videos, doing like transitions or like trendy sounds. And then all it took was one comment asking me for a makeup tutorial. So I filmed it. It was really well received. I got some followers and then it just kind of became a routine over time. And now I literally cannot get ready, put on makeup without filming. <laughs> Love it. I'm sure all of your audience appreciates all of your makeup tips and routines. I know I'm always looking for new techniques and new products to try. So we appreciate creators like yourself. <laughs> Thank you. And Angelica, I'd love to hear from you. How did you get started as a creator and what kind of content do you focus on? Hi, everybody. I'm Angelica. I create content as a Gen Z corporate girly. So very much new grad life, early career, what to wear to work, figuring out your 20s. And I got started during the pandemic where I started posting on TikTok and a lot of my career, um, you know, college tips really took off when that was really popular during the pandemic. And then slowly transitioned to more lifestyle, new grad life as I aged with my audience like it's been spent before. And I uh, post on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. And I still show elements of my corporate job just because that is something that is really um, favored and loved by my audience as well. Similar to like nurse and doctor influencers, I work in tech and so show, I show that aspect. Yes, everyone loves to resonate with that daily work life that we all transition from, from school into adult life, like you mentioned. 
Um, we saw earlier in the presentation how Gen Z survey respondents describe themselves. How would each of you describe your lifestyle? Angelica, you kind of already touched on this with corporate girly, but would love to hear how else you kind of describe your lifestyle and your interests. Yeah, in terms of my, my consumer behaviors and things I wear and purchase, I would say that because I'm in my early 20s, I'm slowly tapping into more investment pieces, like going from more, you know, being balling on a budget in college to now looking at like the mid range price type stores and products I recommend, and then dabbling in some more luxury high end investment pieces. And so I think because I have a job and there's a purpose for like, okay, this is my one blazer I bought. It might be a little pricier, but it's going to last forever. It's been a lot easier for me to show that type of variety. And uh, with a lot of like, you know, PR and gifting and even paid opportunities I get, I think I've been able to show like the range of like areas where, you know, you can still get that great drugstore stuff, but here are places or things that I recommend investing in. So I feel like that range of slowly maturing has been a really good sweet spot for me post-college. That's great. I mean, I definitely think of the same way in my closet, like thinking about things and like a price per wear, is this going to be a staple for, you know, that capsule wardrobe that, that people talk about and strive for? Um, and Maggie, how else would you kind of describe your lifestyle and things you post about and link to? I would say right now I am just super busy and that's the best way to sum up my current lifestyle because I'm also a full-time master's student studying interior architecture. So um, if I see something that I want on TikTok or something, the easier it is to get it, the more likely I am to purchase it. But, you know, if I'm like on my commute or something and it involves a credit card and it doesn't take Apple Pay, I'm less likely to act on it. But then similar to what Angelica was saying, I agree. I've kind of shifted from the college budget where everything is less expensive into more um, what's worth investing in. And I create a ton of capsule wardrobe content as well. So I truly believe in like being minimal and just only having in your collection what's absolutely necessary across the board from makeup to your wardrobe. Awesome. Great to hear. Yeah, definitely trending with those capsule wardrobes. I need to do some purging in my closet myself. Um, what are your favorite social channels? Maggie, what is your go-to? Would you say your favorite TikTok, Instagram? Which one is your go-to? I think my favorite is TikTok because I love how educated educational it is and but it's also like fun and I love how easy it is to be discovered as a creator on there like it really feels like everybody has a fair chance whereas on other platforms like YouTube and Instagram it can be harder to be discovered great and Angelica what about you I think my favorite platform to create for is YouTube because I feel like it's much more fulfilling in the sense of even if it doesn't perform those you know vanity viral metrics as a TikTok like People always say like your loyal fan base is going to watch your 10, 20 minute videos. So seeing that artwork come together is like the most fulfilling to create on um, in terms of like quick things and more like reach and scale. Obviously, TikTok, like Maggie said, is really great. Um, and then for me, this is bas I'm basically saying all, but I have different purpose for all. But Instagram is great because it's just quick and I use my stories quite often. It's an easy place to link things and you know you don't have to overthink about your feed and reels and photos as much. So I use diff them th for different purposes, but um, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, we, de we definitely talk about that on the call too. It's like all these platforms ebb and flow and what consumers are looking to each platform for, they're gonna be different purposes. I might go somewhere for more of that education or sometimes more of that product discovery. So really, um, you know, different use cases for all, like you just mentioned. So um, all of that being said, of course, we talked about LTK being a great place for all of these platforms to lead back to. So we'd love to hear why each of you use LTK and really signed up for LTK as a creator. Angelica, we'll start with you. I think I've definitely used different types of affiliate marketing platforms before, and there's, you know, a bunch out there. And I just found that LTK reward style had the most brands partnered on it. So the worst part about affiliate marketing is like, if you have different sites that host your different accounts, then you just get like different bits and pieces everywhere versus like you can centralize all your comms, the posts. It's really great because you can attach exact products. And then also most of the time, like I... I'm famously an outfit repeater in the sense of like, I wear the same stuff I've owned since high school. And so I probably can't link those items, but I like to link similar items. So that's been really great. And centralizing a kind of similar to like an Instagram Pinterest feed has been really easy for me to do. So all the brands on there and also centralizing it 
and then the similar product options. Great. We love to hear you find a great variety of brands. We definitely agree. And Maggie, what about you? Why do you love to use LTK? I have loved it long before becoming a creator. So on that side of things, it was like such a fun kind of almost extra social media. Like if I was ever in the mood to go shopping, it was so easy to get on LTK and scroll around and really know what I'm buying because I can see someone trying it on. Um, and then I would also see all of my favorite influencers on Instagram, always linking stuff on there. So as a consumer, I love the platform and how easy it was to use and follow people. And then as a creator, it's been great because I, even though I have a huge collection of makeup, I have a really hard time branching out of my routine and my like staple products. But since they're saved in like to know it, every time I make a new post, it's so quick for me to just link everything. And then if there's like one or two new things to add in there, it's easy. And then they're there for good whenever I use that product again, or same thing for wardrobe stuff, like a shirt or something, it's just in there. I can link it every time I post that outfit. Great. Love to hear the ease of use, of course. And we're always looking for new ways to develop our product and really enhance the experience for not only shoppers, but creators and everyone really involved in the process. Um, we kind of talked about, you know, what you guys are linking to these days, whether it be those more investment pieces, more of those wardrobe staples and things of that nature. So can you guys talk a little bit about you know, what you consider when deciding what brand to post about or which ones to tag? Is it really, you know, that price point or the selection, the availability to get it at multiple places, the style? Um, Maggie, we'll start with you. I would say um, my content is mostly driven by what my followers are asking for and also what kind of sales are going on. Because I know for me as a consumer, I'm much more driven to buy something if it's on sale. Um, so that, and then I don't focus too much on what the commission is on the product because I'm just focusing on what I want to share with my followers, whether it be a really high expensive, high end makeup product that I'm going to make an amazing commission off of, or it's like $2 on Amazon. That goes back to the authenticity piece. Obviously you just spoke to that, you know, testimonial, um, and really being authentic with what you're you know, your audience is asking for and you kind of serving them as a creator and having that authentic um, use case. So I appreciate you sharing that. And Angelica, what about you? Yeah, similar to what Maggie said, I think sale things are the easiest to link. One of my favorite brands that often go on sale is Abercrombie and Fitch. And I've been a proud person to say I've been on Abercrombie's train since day zero back in the pandemic before it went viral and I've been pushing for it. And so it's just really easy to push things when they are on sale and there's always like codes out there and, you know, different promotions going on, especially with LTK. So that's been really easy. And especially knowing how young my audience is, a lot of that in my high school, college, new grad range, I don't want to like constantly shove down, you know, clothing items that if they wait a few months, it would go on. You know, like I want to be really cognizant of their behavior too. So I think sales are always great. Um, in terms of what I pick, I think in terms of posting, I'm pretty generous with it just because I feel like just posting, it just gives some brand awareness and also people know where I got it from. But in terms of linking things, I try to be really cognizant of price because um, this is just my personal opinion, but you know, a lot of influencers get most or almost everything they probably have and including myself gifted and free. So I feel like it's really out of touch for me to constantly promote this like $80 toner that I love and I really do, but I also did get it for free. And would I buy it again with my money? Absolutely. It, it, would I have to? Probably not. Like the brand will probably send me another one. And so like, I have to be really cognizant of like what items I want to uh, pick at that price point, knowing there are more affordable options, especially in skincare where there's some really great affordable options. So I feel like skincare is a place where I post a lot more affordable options and mid, mid range prices and just really picky on the expensive stuff. But then with clothing, it's a little easier since I work a day job and that new grad life, it's easier to justify and also talk about like a coat, uh, you know, a few hundred dollar trench coat or a blazer or slacks that's going to last you forever or like a work bag because people are in the market to invest for those types of things. So I think the biggest thing for me on linking is being really self-aware with my audience and the price. 
Yeah, that's great. Especially as you think about like share of wallet, if you know your, you know, your audience has a limited budget or, you know, a set income, you want to make sure that they're making those worthwhile investments like yourself with that, you know, great staple blazer or that nice coat you're going to wear all the time. Whereas skincare, maybe they're looking forward to trying new trends or that dupe or that more affordable option, like you said, from a drugstore. So that's great. Um, speaking of spending and shopping, would love to kind of hear from both of you what you're looking forward to purchasing this summer. Is it festival wear? Is it wedding outfits? Is it more beauty? Would love to um, start with you, Angelica. So summer is always such a fun time for me because I live in LA. It's nice and sunny out. And a lot of my content that performs the best is me and dresses. And I love dresses because you know, we have to think about one thing. So a lot of summer dresses do really well for me, um, kind of in that like 80 to hundred dollar price point range, like summer key pieces. So that's been really fun to put together. And also of course, like a lot of some log SPF backpacks, hiking things, you know, traveling things has been something I'm already starting to do. And I just got back from a festival. So I've been slowly easing into that. Awesome. Yes. SPF everyone on the call. <laughs> and Maggie, what about you? What are you shopping for? Um, I would say, again, I love dresses as well. And then just like maximizing the capsule wardrobe. I love creating content around that. And I think it's super fun and it's always really well received. So, and I feel like every summer I end up basing all of my outfits off of the same tops or dress, like corset tops are always really good for me. And then just building an outfit from there, but having those good basics. And then you can really market those because they're so versatile and totally worth the investment. Um, and I agree with like the price range being around a hundred dollars or less. Um, and then I'm also engaged. I've been engaged for a year. So I'm trying to start doing the bridal things. I haven't really officially started planning the wedding, but that's starting for me um, now. So I'm going to start building out my bridal wardrobe and sharing that for sure. Yes. And congratulations to you, Maggie. So exciting as you move into your next life stage. And Angelica, I know you also have been in the market house hunting, which is in another huge life stage. And you've brought your TikTok audience along with you throughout that process. You know, assuming you're able to um, secure something you love soon, will you kind of bring them along with the decorating process and choosing items for a home as well? Yeah, this has been really exciting to talk about, um, especially because, you know, if I previously, you know, experimented with college room decor things or um, my first apartment decoration things or things in my apartment that just make sense. So especially with like home apartment content really performs well for me. And there's so many great things at like different price points. So once I figure out, you know, continuing with that house buying process, absolutely like whether it's furniture or decorations or appliances, that's something that I'm really excited and looking forward to do. And um, I know I have a proof of concept from previous experience that it's going to perform well. So I'm really excited that it's going to be probably hopefully received well. Awesome. Yeah, we know we see home really on the rise with LTK data, like home continues to grow as such a huge category on our platform. Um, so I'm sure you'll have plenty of brands to link to and maybe Maggie can help you with her uh, design background that she's working on for her master's. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, great. So as we kind of talked about this a little bit already, but as you think about, you know, your shopping and your peers with Gen Z, what do you, you know, think about with how Gen Z may shop or spend money. We talked about in the data that, you know, we're looking at trendy and budget friendly or sustainable options. Can you guys think of anything from your own personal experiences about how, you know, you might differ versus millennials or anything like that? And Maggie, we'll start with you. Um, I feel like Gen Z acts very impulsively, um, but also like you were saying earlier, that influencer marketing is so much more effective than traditional marketing on like TV or online. So as long as they feel like they're investing in something really good, if it is more expensive, um, then they'll feel good about it because it's like they know and trust the influencer. And that's that great relationship that really drives sales. But if it's more of an inexpensive item, like something viral on Amazon, they're just going to get it because it's impulsive, it's inexpensive, and it's fast fashion. And I would say I don't know. I found the sustainable percentage statistics a little bit surprising because I feel like everybody is just like buying whatever is trending on Amazon right now. 
Yeah, they definitely make it easy for a one-click shopping. (laughs) And same thing from our app, you know, it is easy to make those purchases or even save for later if you're not in that, if you're not in that impulse buying mood. Um, Angelica, what about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, this is a little counterintuitive to everything I said about being price cognizant. But I also know that, like Maggie said, Gen Z is not shy about purchasing big items. For example, like, you know, I was hesitant about promoting a $70 toner, but I had no problem talking about how much I love my Dyson Airwrap because also, you know, Gen Z, there was a big wave of everybody getting the Airwrap and that is a multi hundred dollar product. And so I think with the right product that has the right merit and qualities, um, that there's always opportunity for it to go do well and go viral and be a long-term product, like things like that. So I think it's like finding that balance of like, what are the products that are worth it for Gen Z and then for other things that are not as worth it? So I do believe that they have the pocket to make investments like that because we've seen it in the viral products that have been going on for the last few years. Yeah, definitely a trend from everything we talked about today and hearing from you guys, like investment is such a crucial thing. Like, will that product stand the test of time? Is it, you know, proven out by creators? Can this be a staple in your wardrobe? Definitely seeing a theme here. Um, We talked about video a ton in our presentation today and how video is so great because, you know, you can talk about the benefits or how the foundation lays on your face or, you know, that dress, so on and so forth. Can you talk about the content that kind of performs the best for you guys? Is it outfit hauls, get ready with me's, um, you know, et cetera. What does, and does this change channel to channel from Instagram to TikTok? And we'll start with Angelica. So in terms of video formats, correct? We're talking about videos or photos. For video formats, I believe that the best things that work for me are lists. So yesterday I just posted like best things I brought to Coachella and I mentioned a variety of brands. Sometimes mentioning just one brand in a whole video could be a little suspicious or off-putting for some people. Like, oh, was this paid? Was this a partnership? So I always find that mentioning multiple things and like a utility of like, these are the best things that helped me this weekend or like, um, must have for my graduation picks from last year and mentioning different brands really helps to keep it more organic and watch retention higher. And there's just more to talk about because there's only so many things you can say about one product. So I found a lot of success in doing list format stuff. Awesome. And do you cross promote that to Instagram or are you really tailoring your Instagram content for that channel? And same thing with YouTube. So for like short, like casual lists like that, I think I often start off on TikTok and see how it does. But most mm-hmm. of the times I will repost it on Instagram Reels, but we both know with like both TikTok and Reels, there is an at best link conversion flow. So Instagram stories is where I probably go deeper and like link out specific things um, and even put things in my bio if like a single product really goes viral. Like I recently talked about like the Zik battery pack in a whole video and that did really well. And so for a while I put just that battery pack link in my bio because it was so asked about. So I'll just kind of pick and choose of what I feel like the, uh, my audience is resonating with and give those links kind of that special highlight. Awesome. And what about you, Maggie? I would say my teaching content is the best, whether it's like a really specific makeup technique tutorial or um, like capsule wardrobe 101, this is how you're gonna like, own a couple of things and be able to streamline the getting dressed process every single day. Like you'll never feel like you have nothing to wear, like those kind of hooks. And then um, really going deep dive into this is why you need this and making them feel educated so that if they do follow through with the purchase, they can feel very confident about it. And like, it's a very well-informed perfect purchase. Awesome. And Maggie, you have such a variety of makeup looks, whether it's, you know, date night or drugstore versus luxury. How do you decide what to, you know, focus on your content? Is it really listening to your audience or what you're inspired by that day? Um, I do. I mean, I always film when I'm doing my makeup. So there's always a lot of random get ready with me's in there just because that's my life. But I will listen to my audience a lot. And if they ask for specific content, then I will deliver if they need like brushes 101 or something like that. Um, and I also would say I try to do a good balance of high end and drugstore. Like I'll try to do at least one drugstore video a month. And I also see a lot of purchasing behavior around those because it's less expensive. So it's less of a commitment. Great. Um, 
both of you, tell us a little bit about when you are in a partnership with a brand, um, you know, posting on TikTok and Instagram. Does that TikTok for brands look different for, you know, an Instagram, so on and so forth? And really, how do you approach um, that brand partnership content? And we'll start with Angelica. When it comes to short form video, both across Instagram and TikTok, I try to replicate similar models that I've known that worked in the past. So for example, like what I spend videos in the, what I spend in a day videos do really well for me. So I want to, you know, when I work with the brand, when I send over my scripts or ideas, I'll try to incorporate ideas where like, I don't want to be posting a concept, a creative concept that's completely brand new. I have no idea how it's going to perform. So I'll try to model after previous things that I know have done fairly well. And I feel like that's been a pretty positive experience for me. And same thing with Instagram. Uh, Figuring out the balance, I feel like because TikTok is more casual and talkative and sometimes Instagram, a lot of the content that could do well is more like aesthetic and vibey. So figuring out like where I want to put that depending on the product has been very helpful. That's great. I'm sure all of the brands on the call appreciate you making sure you're using tried and true creative concepts to really drive that performance for brands. And Maggie, what about you? How do you approach your content with brand partnerships? I would say whatever I can do to make it feel the most organic, like the more creative I can be, um, if they are going to let me use other products, but not necessarily show the labels, that would be really great. And I've seen great performance in that. And that does, like Angelica was saying, make it feel like my other videos. So it doesn't automatically feel like an ad and also just making it feel like a very accessible tutorial, like the intro being how to get glass skin with three products or in 10 minutes, something like that, then it's a really good hook and people feel like, oh, this is easy. They're going to watch the whole video and maybe buy the products. Great. Appreciate both your insights. Um, so looking at the future, obviously social media is always changing. We saw TikTok explode during the pandemic. How do you guys each see social media changing in the future or even how you use it now versus last year? And we'll start with you, Maggie. I feel like right now TikTok is much more casual for me, at least than Instagram. And maybe that's because I have a larger audience there, but I'm really hoping to grow more on Instagram and be able to post more casually on stories. I have realized that in feed prob probably is going to remain like more formal, but I feel like it's a better community space because it's way easier for me to interact with my followers there through like DMs and responses on stories and Q&A and all of that. So that's what I'm really hoping for. Great. And how about you, Angelica? Angelica, you are muted. Sorry. I feel like with the rise of TikTok and the really democratization of a lot of creators starting their careers and really anyone could be a creator, I feel like in that sense, the space can get really saturated. So I actually feel like more personable talking content is going to be better for the creator and for brands in the long haul, even if it doesn't go as viral as often. The earlier the creators start talking more to the camera, even if it has less views, I feel like it's going to be worth a lot longer because there's so many creators now out there, you know, replicating the templates and the copy paste of the trends. And there's only so many creators that can replicate trends to get the quick, easy views, but actually don't have a following or community. So I think talking content, at least have noticed for me, performed better than I thought, especially with my house hunting content. Cause I was like, I don't know if anyone wants to see me talk, but then I saw that actually people really engage for the whole 90 seconds I was talking. So um, talking and more personable content versus, you know, flexing cute tip content. And then um, what was, what was that the question? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that authentic, like talking content, I think is really that basis of that authentic content that we've been talking about and really helps, you know, you establish your relationship with your audience. And it feels like, you know, you're talking to a friend or talking to someone that you know, and not just someone on the internet that you follow. So that's great. And then last question. So we have a ton of brands here today on the call. What is your advice to brands when working with Gen Z? Um, Angelica, we'll start with you. I know different brands have different objectives for each campaign, but at the end of the day, like their their goal probably after brand awareness is to get that click through and conversion. Um, but I also want to be really, you know, transparent and clear that there are so many products in the market. There are so many great products in the market. There's so many affordable products on the market that are great. And so when you're working with the creator, whatever way, whatever ways you can incentivize 
their audience or, you know, following to buy that purchase, whether it's a giveaway or a extra promotion or, you know, extra coupon codes that are stackable. Like, I feel like that is your best way to get somebody out the door to convert. And if that's your goal, just because there are so many brands out there that somebody can buy that and their sales everywhere at all times. So if your goal is a conversion, like what are you spending that extra amount of effort to get that audience to convert? I feel like it's my number one thing. If I know in this recession area, everyone needs to prove ROI and efficiency. And second, I think more freedom content with um, video creativity, because at the end of the day, like, I like, at least I'm just speaking for myself and I probably for speaking for other creators too, is like, I don't want the sponsored content to do bad, right? But a lot of times I'm pigeonholed into a really bad brief or something that's super salesy and adsy, or I don't mean in this in any offensive way when I say this, but it's like very millennially, like typical blogger era content. And I just know that won't do well. And then I post it and of course it doesn't perform well. And then the brand's like, well, I wonder why I didn't do well. It's like, well, like, because you told me to do this brief and I knew it wasn't going to work. So being more receptive to feedback and trusting the creator to figure out the best way, like number one is to get that reach before we can even talk about conversion. But if you're having creative deliverables and the guidelines that are preventing us from getting good organic reach, then we're not going to get the reach and we're not going to get the conversion. And you're probably not going to want to work with us again. So I'm trying to be more um, compassionate towards creators on like trusting their creative process uh, because we want to prove that it works as well. Yeah, it's like consumers trust creators and so creators should be trusted by brands. That's a great takeaway. And Maggie, how about you? What is your advice to brands when working with Gen Z? I totally agree with everything Angelica just said, especially about the creative briefs and how it is more likely to not do well if it's a super advertisement feeling video. And that's going to cause the brand to probably maybe not want to work with us as creators anymore, but also it's going to cause our views and engagement to drop. So it's going to make us less likely to want to work with that brand again, because it's just going to be another super strict brief. It makes it way more annoying to film. It's not fun to edit. It just feels like an ad, you know, and that's not what the point of influencer marketing is. And then I would also say, of course, we all prefer to do the most organic collaborations possible about our ride or die products and clothing and everything. But if it is a new product that's coming out that I'm promoting for a brand, I need the flexibility from the brand to be able to try the product first because it's really important to me to remain authentic and honest with my audience. And there's a lot of times where the timeline is so short that they say, no, you can't try it. So I'm like, okay, I can't collaborate with you then. So that flexibility being there is really nice too. Totally fair. Again, trust and authenticity is huge. As we've heard from you guys, from our survey respondents, that is really the impetus of creator marketing. And we all need to remember that at the end of the day, we want our creators like you guys to be posting things that you guys are passionate about to really drive those results for brands. And brands are going to see that performance if we can remain true and authentic and organic in our nature. So Really appreciate all of your insights today. It definitely goes along well with all of our survey data. We appreciate your POV as creators and Gen Z across lifestyle content, beauty and fashion. And as both of you enter new life stages with marriage and house hunting. So thank you both so much for joining us today. It was great to have you. And thank you to all of the brands and participants on the call today. Uh, we will be sending through the deck as a follow-up as well. This recording will be available online and you can look forward to our next webinar, which will be creator marketing for recessionary times in May. Thank you everyone so much and have a wonderful day.